I'm very happy to have you uh, here with me today, Daniel. This is Daniel Kramer, who is a micro-budget filmmaker and has done a number of films. So it's going to be awesome to learn this, your secrets and how you've uh, managed to not lose your mind or go broke or have to sell all your books that I see in the background there. Um, <laughs> so, and you know, that, I mean, that was one of the You're things that... Thanks. Yes, thank you. And so, yeah, one of the things that caught my eye was that you'd made uh, six, I think it's six feature films since yes. two, 2007. Yeah. And the second thing was that you broke from what I see is really common, which is that you're not making horror films. So um, maybe to start off with, how have you managed to pull off six films uh, at a micro budget level in like that's almost every two years, one every two years? Um, oh, well, man. I was educated um, at uh, um, you know Temple University's film program, and uh, um, one of the things that they really um, um, instilled in me is a, is the ability to be a kind of a one stop shop uh, type of a deal. Whereas, uh, I mean, I I work with a, with the the same uh, you know, cinematographer that I've worked with in the last uh, uh, ten years or so. Um, and, and other than that, I mean, I, I, um, I basically have operated sound myself, have done various, uh, filled various jobs on set and, uh, um, um, and have managed to kind of cut costs that way without driving myself too crazy. Uh, I also work as a, as an editor, um, as, as a day job during the year when I'm not working on my own things. So uh, um, I have a background in post, so I, I'm, I'm able to do all that um, as well for myself. Um, so in my in my um, estimation, is that it, it, um, you, if, if you have it uh, in you, if you if you have the drive to make a um, um, a feature film, um, then you know to learn as much as you can about as many jobs as as you can fill. Um, so that that also that very much helps to cut costs and also keeping it. It cuts down on, on the kind of the three ring circus aspect of, uh, of, of filmmaking as I see it. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've been on big film sets. I was just on one uh, not too long ago and uh, um, with a lot of people and a lot of manpower, a lot of equipage and, and personage. And it seems that, uh, I don't know, it, it, it seems to often... I mean, um, at the same time, it helps to have um, a lot of people around doing their their various jobs, and and uh, f f filling the various tasks. Uh, it also can serve to to uh, um, interfere occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think I think with very honed in um, sets and very very kind of uh, intimate sets, you can you can really cut out the, the kind of three drink circus aspect and really hone in on, on the more intimate um, um, at, you know, aspects of, uh, of the art itself, which, which, I th which is, I think, why we're, why we're all here and why we're all doing it, I hope, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it really, I mean, because it can get to be quite uh, stressful sometimes. You have a lot of people that are looking to you for answers. And, and I, uh, one of my early film, one of my early features I had a kind of a, a larger crew, um, and I I just kind of learned that I I preferred to work uh, this way. And actually, one of my mentors here in the Bay Area is a guy named uh, Rob Nielsen, uh, who is uh, um, you know he's he's been making um, micro budget features for I mean you know we're talking since the the late seventies, um, and uh, was one of the first people to really pioneer video. Uh, as a as a means by you know by which you can make a a, a presentable um, film you know essentially uh, he was the first to to really uh, or one of the first at least and I know that Frank Zappa did it with 200 motels and a couple other examples in between but he was the first to to um, convert early video into into a film print. Um, and uh, I've, I've edited with him, and he's all about the idea of direct action, uh, getting a group of, of, of co-conspirators, as it were, and, you know, pulling your resources and just, you know, going out onto the streets filming without permits oftentimes, oftentimes if you can manage to do it without getting arrested. Uh, I highly recommend it. Um, and there, there are ways to be... Um, um, 
surreptitious, I guess is the is the right word. Uh, the uh, and 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 your 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 methodology. So basically, going out in the world and and using the means at at, um, at your disposal and making what he calls direct action uh, cinema, uh, which which I'm a, which I'm a huge um, you know, proponent of. Um, I met uh, I've I've encountered a lot of people over the years who've who've been uh, well. How do you afford to do it? How do you how do you make all these films every year? It's like, and uh, and they're and they're talking about well, I had, a, I had a unit production manager and I had all these grips and everything. It's like, well, you really you know, unless you're talking about a major Hollywood movie with a lot of moving parts, you don't need all these people. You you can do something meaningful and very presentable with, with what you have uh, um, in, in front of you. It doesn't have to be this whole big ordeal. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So that's that's how I've managed to do it all these years. And so, what for you is your ideal crew size? Do you have one, or do you, does it change from film to film? Uh, I mean, I on 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 Razor Kids on Seltzer, which is my last released feature. I have, I have one coming up uh, that's going to be released early next year. Um, the that was very very scaled down uh, because I was it was just uh, my my cameraman Aaron Hollander was on camera we had we had uh, you know a nice uh, equipment package but uh, um, it was mostly the, you know the two of us putting it uh, uh, together most of the time uh, and uh, on the on the occasion that we had a, a, a friend show up is like hey do you want to do you want to do this or do you want to do that. Um, and, um, you know, and mostly, most of the time I was saying action and pressing the record button on my, on my little, <laughs> on, on my little s sound recorder and, uh, um, and, and, and by a, by a uh, continued miracle throughout all these films, the, the sound turned out quite well. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, you, you really can do it if you, if you know how to economize and you know, and you really teach yourself, I think, how to, how to do all the, um, as much as you possibly can. I had great teachers at Temple, uh, Mike, Mike Kudemeyer, uh, was, was very, um, influential on, on me. He, he, he formed the, the, the termite television collective back in, in Philadelphia and, you know, he taught me everything I know in terms of the the technical end about video, uh, in, in to the point where I, I've saved I guess a lot of a lot of uh, uh, corrupted footage uh, for, for for other filmmakers by doing these the, these these uh, you know crazy digital things. So by teaching yourself like you know as much as you possibly can in every possible department, um, you can be you, you can think a little bit uh, better on your on your on your feet. Um, and, um, I mean, and, and it doesn't take a lot. I mean, it, it, it doesn't even necessarily take a four year college diploma to show for it. Um, you know, there are, I mean, there are so many books about, uh, digital cinema and about the kind of the, the tricks of the trade out there. Um, so all you really have to do is, is, you know, you can learn everything yourself and you can be kind of, a um, you know, one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and you can get, um, all these, dream projects that you have in your head you can get them out you know, onto onto the screen and you can make them pretty uh, presentable i guess uh, pretty and not not and not looking amateurish or like some some dudes in a in a in a yard with a with a video camera doing whatever mm -hmm. uh, you can really make it look um, like good looking you know and handsome yeah yeah um, well you're i mean i i haven't seen um, kids on seltzer but uh, the trailer looks amazing it looks. It doesn't look. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like a you know a poorly shot. Doesn't look like Clerks, for instance. You know, like it actually looks like a, a nice, a nice cinematography in there. So, congrats on that. Yeah, Aaron. Aaron is a great. He's a great cameraman. Now, I mean, that's interesting the way you're approaching it. You know, the direct action cinema stuff and the you know the really pruned down and jack of all trades sort of model. I'm wondering how does it, how does that uh, approach shape the kinds of scripts you write and how you approach the story process? Um, well, I, I, I take a lot of time. Um, Rob, Rob is really, I mean, Rob did four features in the last year, um, two of which I, I cut for him. Um, so Rob is I, at this point in his career, uh, just wants to, I think, keep on, you know, working, keep on, on, on cranking things out. Um, I, I like to, to really 
gestate on, on things more. I've been I've been um, kind of planning my my next feature to go into shooting for the last um, almost two years now. Um, and uh, in terms of scripts, um, that's that's also tricky. I mean, I know that that uh, um, um, improvisational cinema has a kind of a, a stigma in many quarters. Um, but uh, um, I mean, there are ways to to direct um, 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 improvisational cinema where it feels very, very structured and very um, and, and w without kind of getting unwieldy, which I which I see a lot of mumblecore type films or post mumblecore films uh, kind of doing where it's kind of loose ended and where wherever it goes is where the scene goes. But um, and but there's uh, the, the way that I work normally is I, I you know, there's a very detailed outline where we begin. And, uh, I, and, and um, I spend a lot of time kind of ironing that out over a long, over a long period. And uh, um, so by the time that we have, we're approaching a scene, we have a scene order and say, like, okay, you need to hit this point, this point, and this point, get there, you know, arrive at these things somehow. And normally it's me behind the camera and it's in and, and editing is a lot of cutting me out my voice saying, no, 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 don't go there. Don't go there. I don't like that. Try this. And, you know, so I'm, I'm really directing as the cameras are rolling. Um, and, um, so, and, and, um, the, a lot of the, the reviews that we've gotten on, on Rikos or basically on Seltzer, we call it Rikos, uh, for short, uh, the, 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 the reviews that we've gotten on that, on that film so far, uh, all have complimented the, um, I think one of the quotes was the uncommonly naturalistic uh, dialogue uh, and acting, which just basically comes from, you know, you have two actors who know the characters and you've you've brought them on for a reason. And these are two, uh, and, and in the case of Rikos, it's two real middle-aged married people who know what it is to be in a real middle-aged marriage. Um, and you talk with them about, you know, okay, what is what does this mean to you? If, if, if your character does this, what is this? How does this compute for you? Um, and uh, so, you know, normally it's like, okay, so this is what we have to accomplish in this scene. We need to get these things out there and, you know, to give the, to give each scene the, the purpose. So arrive there and I'll be directing you in the middle of it. And uh, normally in editing is where where really the, the movie gets made, I guess, in any event, whether you have a more a more detailed script, uh, formal script or not. But really in my films, uh, when I'm, when I'm editing is really when the movie emerges. Um, and, uh, you're cutting out, uh, all of the, all of the, uh, all the crap I'm saying behind the camera and, uh, um, and you're picking really, and, and they, and oftentimes there's such, uh, and, and, you know, to my mind, really, really transcendent moments. I've really been lucky to have worked with really great actors over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you know, and people who you, 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 you just need people who understand where you're coming from and, and equating it with their own lives and seeing how, how they can contribute to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's really my, my method of working is very, very much, um, very structured improv, I guess you might, you might call it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And do you have, uh, I mean, that's an inter really interesting process. I'm, I come as a writer, so I'm sort of jealous of my, my control of that, that process. And I, right. I like to really write everything out. So, but I'm always fascinated right. by people who are, have a more open process and then kind of admire them maybe yet for being less control freaky than, uh, than me. So that's, that's kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I write, I write, uh, I mean, I, I wrote a, I, I've, I've written one book that's out about, about my, my mentor, Sidney J. Fury. Uh, who made the the Chris file and, and Lady Sings the Blues, and I'm very much a writer myself. Um, but I think in film, when I'm when I'm doing film, I I, I know I like I like I, I like the fact that it's you know like like you can't really do that that type of thing um, you know, um, on a stage or in, in any other art form. And and I I really think that this is what Rob Nielsen is about as well is that you have the ability to shape things uh, post facto, and you can really. Uh, write as it were in posts, which is, which is which you can't do in any other medium. Mm -hmm. um, so using that to your your benefit as, as as opposed to your your detriment, uh, it can it can 
in the wrong hands, I, I think it can get to be very, very self-indulgent and very uh, um, often rather um, um, aesthetically dangerous, uh, you know, shall we say. Uh, it's a risk that I think a lot of people don't want to take because they, they've seen kind of clumsy, you know, improv like, you know, like backyard movies. Um, whereas, whereas I think there's, there's a, where there's a way to meet in the middle, uh, and really use, uh, you know, the best of both worlds that you, you have the world of, of, of structure and this leads to this and then, then that leads to this and then back and forth. Uh, and also kind of like the, the, the free flowing aspect of life as, as it, as it is, as we, as we perceive it. Mm-hmm. Um, that to me is, is, is a, as a, as a certain magic of, of, of the form that that can't be mimicked in, in any other medium so i like to play with that when i'm you know, when i'm shooting mm-hmm. now um i'm interested uh in turning maybe a bit towards uh raise your kids on seltzer because uh I, mm-hmm. it's a fascinating idea i've never seen a story about uh, cult deprogrammers before that i can think of anyway. nor i and uh, <laughs> so uh, where did that's, this that's why i was i was drawn to it yeah i mean where did this idea come from this idea of people of kidnapping people in cults, I guess, on behalf of their family and then deprogramming them? Well, it comes from way back for me because I, uh, um, I as a teenager, I, I was obsessed with um, Jonestown and, uh, and, and, and the Manson family. Uh, I read uh, uh, Helter Skelter cover to cover when I was, uh, must have been like 15 or 16. And when I when I got to the, la- the back part of the cover, mm-hmm. I turned around and, and began it all over again. I was obsessed with it. For, for many many years, um, my parents were a little concerned, I think. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but it was really it was really the idea that uh, of control and of and of uh, being able to kind of you know, the idea of brainwashing, I guess, was a very very ripe concept for me because I I was, I was totally like, how can this how how does this go down? How how does how does anything like this transpire? And uh, you know, even even with people with uh, what what we might perceive as as strong minds um so at, over the years i saw many films about the the cult phenomenon including uh uh you know ticket to heaven which is a, a canadian film mm-hmm. uh which I, I know you're calling from toronto yeah um so that i, th- I think that's a, a, t- a toronto-based film uh and uh by ralph uh, thomas i think his name is and um and a split image by ted kotchup who's another toronto guy um, who I, I know who directed Weekend at Bernie's and uh, Wake and Fright. Um, so in in all these movies, you have the the, the figure of the the deprogrammer kind of entering in the third act, uh, and he's kind of becomes like the the Deus Ex Machina, I guess. He's the he's the the savior, mm-hmm. uh, and he helps to get whatever main character is caught in a in a cult, whether it's run by Peter Fonda as it is, and and in Split Image or. If it's you know whatever it's so, the so, I was I was really um, interested in like okay I, I, you know we've seen movies about people trapped in cults who were who were taken out or whatever and but always the figure of the of the deprogrammer is backgrounded, mm-hmm. um, so I really want to uh, like what are their lives like and there's a there's a there's a famous figure Ted Patrick who's a kind of the the father of, uh, of all deprogrammers who had many lawsuits who followed in his wake because he used uh, violence and coercion and, and, and a lot of the, a lot of his clients as it were, uh, were had post, um, you know, post-traumatic stress after, after they, they, after he had his way with them. Um, so I was like, okay, let's, so I, I want to do a film about this. Um, and, uh, so what, what would make it even more interesting? And, um, it was around the time that I saw, um, a film of Rob Nielsen's, where uh, Pe- uh, Penny uh, Werner and uh, J- Jeff Gow were it's it's an it's an ensemble movie but they play kind of a, a you know eccentric couple uh, in in that film and and I was I was I was like oh they're they're kind of funny and 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 interesting together on the screen they have a weird chemistry that I'd like to play with and I'd met each of them individually but I hadn't seen them together in the same room but seeing them together in this movie is like oh that would be interesting putting them together so i was like well is there a way that i could put them together as a couple I was like well wait a minute what what if i made what if i made the movie about a married couple middle-aged married couple who who used to be cult the the programmers and make it about their marriage and make it about their home rituals and 
and and everything else and and just kind of went from there uh so that's really what what drew me to it is is the the original uh you know obsession it was uh, as a teenager with cults and always wanted to do my cult movie um and then um and then meeting jeff and penny and then saying oh well we we should do a film with them as a kind of a, a a uh, married couple and they they had this they have this in their past and what if they I went back to it and how is their marriage kind of based on uh kind of culty ideas of control and the movie opens with a Borges quote um uh, falling in love is creating a, a religion with a fallible deity um so very much you know the idea that uh, whoever our our significant other is how much of our our daily human uh relationships and and kind of interrelationships are based on these ideas of of control and power and everything and using the kind of cult things as a as a backdrop for that Mm -hmm. wow that's uh that's all very a very cool process the way that all came together your kind of adolescent obsession and then with this couple and everything it all has a nice kind of uh uh, serendipitous kind of element to it which is very cool when that happens And how long, what was the production process, like the length in terms of production or development production and post-production? Because you're pretty incredibly prolific to have made six films since 2007. So, I mean, how fast are you getting a movie like this done? Uh, well, when I got when I got the idea solidified, it was really talking over um, what the actors would, would probably consider a lengthy period of time, which which to me was a kind of a... You know, because normally when I'm shooting one, I'm thinking about, you know, well, next I want to do this. So maybe I should begin talking with, uh, you know, future collaborators about about the next thing. So uh, to them, it was a long process of just like, well, let's talk about these characters and uh, let's really have a conversation that lasts over uh, what, what, what was to them a lengthy period of time r- r- relative to me. It was a shorter period of time than, than others, because I think they really had a handle on the. Uh, on who these people were, um, and um, and 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 they and Jeff and Penny would also would contribute ideas of their own uh, th- that I would work into my my treatment. There's a whole subplot involving Penny having a a uh, an um, identical twin sister, uh, which we use some some uh, um, special effects to to uh, to render that. Um, so I was like, oh, that's interesting having, that's, that adds a whole other layer onto this whole, this whole thing. So, uh, so, so they would contribute ideas and then they, then I would work these into the treatment. They, they had time to sit with the treatment for a while. And, and then we, we came up with an outline based on that, uh, based on, you know, scene by scene, you know, what's happening and what, what needs to happen and where does it go? Um, and, um, and then, and then once we were ready, we, we shot the film uh 15 days i think was the was the time you know in which we shot it uh using two cameras at all times um and um so that 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 automatically cut down on the on the on setup time mm-hmm. um and um yeah yeah so it was it was it was basically 15 days uh with, with you know two cameras i never had a better experience shooting any movie uh than i have on Rikos. Um, it was really, I don't know, it was a dynamic process, uh, where, you know, Jeff and Penny would arrive, you know, on set every day, it would be me and Aaron would be lighting and and we'd be getting ready. And it was just like, you know, uh, going to a job every day and you liked, I liked the people that I was working with and it was really, uh, we just kind of banged it out and it was, it was the best experience I've ever had on a, on a movie set was on that, that particular movie. Uh, it was just a really wonderful time that I, I look back on fondly. I wish, I wish all shoots can be that easy. Yeah. And what happened, <laughs> you know, once the movie was done, uh, you said, uh, you mentioned that it had gone to some festivals and stuff. Talk a little bit about its sort of life after birth. Well, um, it, it did, it did show at, uh, um, at, a, at a number of fests and it, it got, got reviewed on, on a couple sites. Um, this is a, a, I guess a touchier area because I'm, I'm kind of, heavily disenchanted with the kind of the, the festival scene, uh, at the moment. And, uh, as a, as a writer on film, I have, I've gathered a lot of, um, I guess dirt, as they say, uh, about, uh, uh, film festivals kind of, um, 
often not even watching films that are are submitted or I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I've, I've gotten I've, I've dug a great deal into this whole this whole uh, um, um, you know ongoing I guess um, you know, um, controversy because we we live in a content rich world nowadays. I think there's there are just too many films coming in for for film festivals to review um in, in any depth at all um so um you know really what i learned when i was in film school um and i was very crestfallen when i learned this um and and that you know i i um, i recall a, um, you know, a filmmaker coming in and saying like well it pays to have contacts and it pays to network because it's not an easy uh, world to navigate i guess uh you know f- you know f- film festivals are very clannish and very chummy oftentimes not all of them but you know a fair number of them i would say um but um really networking and making as many contacts as you can will only breed um will only breed you know um good things for your work um and and and, and i'm not i i don't want to cast aspersions on, on all fests there are many fests out there that are that are uh, um that do look at everything and and, and that are very um you know, um, egalitarian when they're when they're looking at films to to program, um, but um, the advice I would give any any, any filmmakers don't don't uh, let don't let the air out of your tires if you get uh, any amount of uh, of, of rejections um, because uh, um, you know it's just it's a tough scene oftentimes and uh, um, but on, I mean on the bright side in the, in, in kind of the the digital world there are many platforms uh and many ways to get your film seen uh festivals um you know i I was i i I was lucky enough to screen at five of them i i won awards at two of them uh for best best narrative feature um and um and and you meet you meet wonderful people at at fests uh but but i i feel that a lot of the a lot of what I see with 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 fellow filmmakers I know is that they, they make their passion project, and they're so incredibly traumatized when the when they're when they get this round of <laughs> of rejections, um, and um, you know it takes a lot to to learn and and to to discover that often it's not it's not about the film itself which is which are often of high quality it's it's that you know. It's that uh, it's a rough scene, and and the, but there are many ways that you can go about kind of uh, getting your work shown and getting it, and you know just working in the angles is really you can't, you know, and and as I posted on the on your s- site that one day, you can't take no for an answer. Sometimes mm-hmm. you really got to go out and make your own fortune, um, and um, and and you can't let it uh, stop you from making future films if, if you want to make them. Um, I, I think I think a lot of people will get that that round of <laughs> of rejections, and they'll say, "Oh, well, that's that. I I tried. I, I I tried my hand at making films. I guess it's not for me." Um, if you really have it within you to to make films, and you really want to keep doing it, keep doing it. There there you know, absolutely. There 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 are ways to to continue doing it with, and don't let don't let any any naysayer or any uh, you know any uh, any of these, uh, you know, <laughs> corrupted festivals, uh, wink, wink, with which I, with, with, with which I speak, get you down. Um, and uh, just, you know, uh, just be a, a voracious reader. Uh, I would, I would say, you know, just try to, you know, get your hands on as much literature or as many articles about about the film scene as you can, and uh, really work it. You know, that's that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so have you, uh, I mean, it, it, you raised the point about there being so many platforms that exist out there. And, you know, we use, with our first film, we had our film up on Gum Road for a while before. We, got, we have a sales agent now and we're going through the painful, painful process of deliverables. But, uh, you know, I did some research on some of those and there was some, you know, really good stuff out there in terms of opportunities and, you know, stuff that didn't exist five, ten, you know, ten years ago. So is right, right. is uh, raise your kids on Seltzer? Is it is it up and available online? Is there somewhere people could find it? Not yet. Uh, it's so I I um I have uh, three of my films are up on 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 Fandor currently, um, and um, hmm. I uh, I'm very friendly. Uh, I I live in the Bay Area, so I'm 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 quite friendly with uh, with Jonathan Marlowe, who 
no longer works for for Fandor. He left. Uh, um, I'm going to say a few months ago. Um, but uh, so I mean, I, I use that, that that platform, and every once in a while, I get a, uh, a nice little <laughs> little revenue check from from uh, it being seen on there. Um, and um, so so with, you know, with Rikos, it's kind of ending its 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 festival tour right now, and um, we were supposed to have a a, a theatrical uh, release in New York and L.A. And that's, I guess, I know, long, long story, but that's currently um, up in the air. I, 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 I think it'll happen. I'm, I'm pretty, I, I, I believe it will happen, but it's, it's, uh, um, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on with it right now. We were, we were supposed to have it released back in June, and then it got pushed off, and then, so I'm not sure currently. But, but Rikos will, will, will definitely be online eventually down the line. I'm not sure exactly when. Or on what platform, and, and might very well be on on, on Fandor again, um, if I if I continue and I like uh, the the direction. I think they I think Fandor changed their their kind of uh, the, the the direction in which they were heading a bit. Um, so if I if I agree with that, I'll I'll, I'll continue to, to to distribute online on on there. If not, I'll find another another avenue. Yeah, yeah. And your next film, you talked about your next film being done next year. You haven't, but you haven't shot it yet, right? You, you still have to shoot that. So um, I have one of my features is um, was shot uh, four years ago, which we're just getting around to completing now, um, and um, that uh, you know, so that's going to be finished uh, within the next month or two. Um, and, um, and then, uh, my next feature is, is a film called Precious Wheels Above, which is, uh, which is going to be shooting, it looks like in March or April. Um, so, um, and, uh, hoping to have, um, we had, we had Barry Newman, um, appear in, in, uh, uh Rikos, uh, from, he was, he was the lead actor in, 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 in Vanishing Point and, uh, and, and the Limey. Uh, he wasn't the, the lead in the Limey, but he was, in, uh, you know, uh, an actor in that film. But uh, we're hoping to have a, a nice, you know, an, another name cameo appearance, I guess, uh, which I can't talk about right now. But it's it's a good it's a good actor, and uh, so we're 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 planning that right now, and we're hoping to begin shooting in, in March or April. So that's what's up with that. Awesome! Wow, uh, I'm. <laughs> I feel a bit humbled that you're how prolific you are, that how much output you do. And that's awesome that you do that. And uh, I'm sure that will be inspiring to people, you know, to, yeah. see, to see that it's, well, to I see mean, that it's what, possible. In the end, what, what matters is the, uh, is the work, you know, you gotta, you gotta do, uh, you, 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 if you, if it's important to you, you'll, you'll find a way to do it. 